Ayon, kumusta kayo lahat? I'm back with another exciting video. And I hope that you watched my old videos from the Philippines and from Manila from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, even from the 40s. They're unbelievable. Gorgeous talaga. It shows the Philippines like it used to be. But this video is again a little bit different. It's another video made by a company. But I showed you the video from Pan Am. I showed you the video of Coca-Cola. This video is made by Shell. You know Shell, the gas stations? Right, so Shell Company has been in the Philippines for more than a hundred years and they've actually made this video telling us a little bit about their story in the Philippines. So, let's watch. In 1914, Shell arrived in the Philippines. Ooh, that's a long time ago. It's been a century of wars. Yes. Political strife. Right. the entire Philippines under martial law. Okay and mega storms. I asked for support from the police and the military to secure this site. Oh, so 1914, so that's 107 years that Shell has been here. 1914, that was really the outbreak of uh, this First World War in Europe. So there was a funny time that they came here. Maybe it was before the World War started. But 100 years on, Shell has become one of the world's largest companies. Right. And the Philippines, one of the most exciting and dynamic nations in Asia. Mm. A center in the Philippines. Today, the Philippines is booming. Mm, capo. With 98 million people, it is one of Asia's fastest growing economies. And by 2050, predicted to be the world's 14th largest. Wow. The economy is supposedly the 14th largest economy by 2050. I've actually heard something slightly different, but that's fine. As long as we are moving forward, right? And what we see here is Antipolo in the back. I see the Shang Towers, I think it is. I see part of Ortigas. Am I right? Yes, it is. Okay, let's go. But when Shell first arrived, it was a very different time. Oh yeah, must have been. An English businessman, Marcus Samuel, began by selling kerosene in the country. Okay. He built tankers that carried fuel from the west to ports in the east. All right. And started naming the fleet after his father's seashell collection. Really? A tradition that the company still carries on today. Wow, I didn't know that. So that's how they got the name Shell, huh? From his father's seashell collection. And each tanker had a name depending on the different seashells. Wow, that's amazing. I had no idea. Most of your kerosene dealers were also at the same time dealers in rice, in salt, in all sorts of commodities. So okay. they were not exclusively petroleum dealers. Right. And that's how the business has been in the past. Look at all those petroleum lamps, huh? So that was how they were selling it in about a hundred years ago? Wow, incredible. The oil industry has been a, an indispensable part of any kind of progress. Yeah, without of course. Without oil or without gas, you can't power the factories, you can't That's move true. people in cars or in trains or whatever. Mm. Cesar Buenaventura joined Shell in 1958, wow. straight out of university. That's a long time he's been with Shell, huh? Wow, that's really, really long. I wonder what he's doing there. In the early 50s, the Shell group embarked on a policy of bringing up locals to responsible positions in the company. Okay, they that's good. made very conscious effort to recruit what they would like to think of as the best and the brightest. He went on to become the first Filipino chief executive officer of Shell wow. and was eventually awarded an OBE nice. for his distinguished service. Nice, huh? That's one of the highlights of my, I guess, of my career. Yeah, of course. When Cesar was just a child, the Second World War broke out. The Japanese bombed towns across the Philippines. Shell had a critical... Oh my God, God, do you see those flamethrowers? No wonder Manila was destroyed. It was the second most destroyed city in the entire world after the Second World War. That's crazy, huh? Shell had a critical role supplying fuel to the Allied forces. 
Medical Corps troops, Fatrol and Finance Building. Before the war, we were almost completely agriculture. Oh, really? Hardly any manufacturing in ah, Philippines. Okay, yeah. So it, immediately after the war, when there were opportunities to start building up manufacturing facilities, Shell, in the company of Filipino shareholders, built our own refinery in mm -hmm. the early 60s. Okay. The country became less reliant on imports for its energy. But with the 70s oh my God. came political upheaval yes. that resonated worldwide. I signed proclamation number 1081, placing the entire Philippines under martial law. The president, Ferdinand Marcos, presided over a long era of civil unrest. Profits for the oil industry plummeted, and many of the oil giants pulled out. Yeah, of course, who wouldn't? I think Shell stayed because they felt that even under those conditions, there was a way by which you could be part of progress in the Philippines. There was potential, there was a promise in the Philippines of a future, and mm. that even this dictatorship and martial law will, will pass. It took 20 years, but it did pass bringing new opportunities for the country and the companies that had remained. In 2001, oh, Malampaya. Malampaya, its biggest project. I always felt that there was petroleum somewhere in the Philippines. Okay. If you look at Malampaya, it's a major discovery. Yes. It was not an easy field to develop because it was in a thousand meters of water. Right. Today, Malampaya provides no less than a third of the country's total energy demand. Wow, that's crazy. It's so crucial that the capital, Manila, would be in darkness without it. Can you imagine that? Malampaya is providing a third of all our energy requirements. That's crazy. But that's a lot. That's good. But then, why is our electricity so expensive if we have the Malampaya fields? Hmm, Manila Bay. In recent decades, however, as the Philippines' population has exploded, the gap between the rich and poor has grown. Nearly 22 million people now live below the poverty line. Okay, that really does look very poor. I hope that we are not going to see too much of that because that is really sad. Uh, I think it's improving though because when I go around to places like Paseco, you know, and uh, Tondo and stuff like this, I don't see it being like this anymore. I mean, yeah, there's still lots and lots and lots of lots of poor people, but it's not as dirty as what I see in this video. This really surprised me a lot that they were going to show something like that. I wonder where it was. Slums in major cities are okay. increasingly common. 22 million people now live below the poverty line and slums in major cities are increasingly common nation building is a 24 hour seven day effort that has to be done by everyone of course you don't get out of poverty unless you are trained or you're educated Sweet an organization basil. called Gawad Kalinga meaning to give care is facing this challenge head-on. 30% of the people here used to be drug dealers, users, and also involved in some crime. So they got them out of that. That's good. This is the Shell Training Center. Shell is seen Filipino that Shell they Center. go beyond corporate social responsibility. That's They're good. They're actually investing in helping us build the future market. All right. That's good. Shell uh, shares also the resources to build 250 homes in the first two Shell villages and mm. uh, make the poor not just victims but productive citizens. Right. That's good. Its That's good. Its mission is to end poverty for 5 million families by 2024. So that's the mission of that organization that is supported by Shell and probably other people as well. Well, that's great. If they can help that many people, why not, you know? Gawad Kalinga is just one of many Shell social enterprises in the Philippines. Oh, si Rudel, pero si David wala. Another is the Philippines Shell Foundation, 
whose biggest success story is the fight against malaria. Oh, really? When we started the Malampaya development in Palawan, we were in a place where there was a lot of malaria mosquitoes. Okay. So we said, well, why don't we look at helping the population errad the kind of get out of this? So we started a program called Movement Against Malaria. Mm, really? When the program started, there were only three doctors in the whole province. They trained villagers to use microscopes and identify infected blood. Oh, that's great. That's nice. It really helped a lot. The program was so successful, it was extended across four more provinces. Okay. Eradicating malaria in thousands of households and saving untold lives. Nice. So they're really being very responsible and very involved in the community where they are. Shell Corporation, I had no idea that it was this much. I know we always hear about them, you know, but, but we don't hear about these projects. I mean, I haven't heard about them before, but I'm glad they exist. I'm glad I'm watching this video. I'm learning something new here. So that's great. What is this? This is the, oh, it's a typhoon. Yolanda, maybe, or I know. Being part of the community also means oh my gosh. being in when things go wrong. Ah, una po, po kami, kasi mm. kahit po, may mga po na... Opo. <laughs> cute. And in this, the centenary year, as a mark of recognition. The Philippine government has honored Shell's contribution to the country by including its famed pectin on a special edition factory. Really? Wow, I haven't seen that money with the Shell logo on it. Have you guys ever seen that 100 peso bill with it? To show gratitude to Manila and the Philippines, the Shell Eco Marathon was staged for the first time to celebrate the first 100 years. Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. More than 100 student teams from 15 countries took on the challenge to see who could go the furthest on the least amount of fuel. Wow. <laughs> Look at those cars. They're so cute, some of them. I was inspired by uh, World War II planes. We like to go with wood because it's different from the other competitors. I was from Singapore. Is there any Filipinos there? Just wondering. Yo! Who was first place? Yeah. <laughs> the ultimate energy efficiency competition brought together the smartest young minds in Asia. Oh, from the Philippines! So the winners were from the Philippines. Wow, that's amazing. That was great. When I see all of you here, I see that you are truly the hope of not only your respective countries, yes. but the hope of our world for the future. Wow, nice. Congrats, congrats. Wow, so this video is actually from 2014, as you guys can see. So it's a few years old. I mean, well, few. It's seven years old, right? But that's fine. So Shell has been in the Philippines for 107 years. And look at all the things that I did not know about Shell in the Philippines. They're sponsoring all these organizations and helping Philippines become a better place to live. I had no idea. So I think this was a great uh, eye-opener. And I hope a lot more companies would actually put out videos like this and tell about what they're doing here in the Philippines. I mean, yeah, they're here, they're making a business, they're making money, and that's it. But do they also do other things? Do they help the country? Do they have special projects that we don't know about? So guys, if you know about any kind of companies in the Philippines that are doing something like Shell is doing, why don't you tell me in the comments below so that I can try to look at the videos. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video from Trending Ni Andres. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to click that subscribe button and of course the bell button so you'll be notified when we have new videos for you.